Hey everyone, today I want to go back to this series discussing some of my favorite books, tutorials, and uh, knowledge resources out there on the internet. We've discussed drawing for concept art previously as well as jumped into values. And today I want to dive into materials, rendering, and the principles of color. Uh, so just as before, we're going to use the numbers structure so that you can refer back to this point in the video later on if you want to find uh, any specific tutorials uh, and uh, go straight through the link in the description below. So this is it. If you want to come back later on, uh, here are the numbers. But, uh, I'm not going to follow any specific order just as I did with the values. So the numbers are not supposed to be a series, a sequence. Uh, it's more for this kind of referral uh, later on. So what I want to do today is understand what's behind color uh, and how we're going to evolve through it. It's going to start as we did in values, starting with casting shadows and understanding of light sources and they, then tackling value relationships, value grouping and so on. We can think the same for materials, rendering uh, and color as a whole. Today, I want to divide the discussion into three main parts. First of them being the understanding of light uh, and the properties of each material. Uh, we're going to jump right in and, and look at those examples pretty close up. The limiting of palettes and what we can do with that. And finally, using that understanding and perception and grasp of colors to convey mood uh, and the message that we want to convey. Uh, I'm going to in the end, go back and do a little bit of a review, but without further ado, let's jump right in. So basically, how to render and color and light go really in depth into each material, its properties, reflections, subsurface scattering, and so on. So all the theory uh, can be found here. Uh, how to render will definitely go really in depth matte surfaces, shading with graphite, and so on. So I highly recommend this book as a starting point, as I said before, in the casting of shadows and so on. Uh, it, it's really great as a basis. You are laying the basis for everything that you're going to build on top. But for me, the best material to learn the fundamentals of lighting is Sam Newson's course on schoolism. As we saw with the previous videos, Drawing, I highly recommend foundation group, uh, especially for concept art in terms of structure, design, variations, and so on. Values, it's spread out in terms of which one is best, but definitely for color and materials and painting, in my opinion, schoolism is the best resource out there. So definitely worth a subscription. Uh, they're not paying me anything to say that, but it's the best resource out there. You're going to learn everything you need about painting with their uh, subscription. And if you have uh, the means, the courses with feedback. But if you don't have, uh, you can definitely start with spread out uh, content. And I brought some of them uh, here. Uh, so Material renderings, there are these good tutorials on uh, foundation group as well, uh, rendering with markers. So you start to go away from photorealism and start designing. So this is really important. It could be gouache, it could be watercolor. We're gonna see another example later on, but this is where you go away from painting realistically and this is where I made a big mistake of not studying a lot of these design decisions. So I highly recommend going uh, on uh, there. This one by Dong Jun uh, Lu, as well as a lot of other tutorials from this gum road, definitely is the middle way. Starts designing and making decisions, but has a little bit of a realism in there. Definitely worth uh, checking out as well as the understanding of textures from uh, Jonathan Hardesty. Jonathan Hardesty uh, is on schoolism, but he 
did a very deep dive into materials to bring this content. There are some spread out YouTube videos, such as this one from uh, Jeremy Vickery, this one as well. His DVD back in the day for Noman was one of the most eye-opening tutorials I've ever seen. So def definitely worth checking out his YouTube channel as well as this DVD. The link is gonna be in the description. And uh, when you start looking at the world, things are gonna start getting more complex. I, I skipped through one of the tutorials. We're gonna get back to that in a bit. But designing with watercolor, uh, I love this approach by Gonzalo Carcamo. Uh, he really needs to make design decisions because he is painting transparent layers. So he's going from light to dark. So re he really needs to understand what he wants to convey. And Carcamo is not one of those watercolor artists that will really go very small into the details and do something photorealistic, uh, nothing against that. But as he does more of broad shapes painting and letting the water do its job, definitely design will play a very important part in there. Uh, the next step would be to jump into real life and looking at the world in a bigger picture. Painting with light and color by Dai Tsutsumi and Robert Kondo uh, is one of the best courses out there on this topic. The exercises are hard, but great. If you can get a grasp with this, you, go, you will go a very long way. Uh, you can also check out uh, Nathan Falk's course on painting landscape. So you use a, a little bit of watercolor as well as gouache. Uh, he has a great book on that as well. And there is this outdoor planner tutorial um, from the foundation group. Also from an a instructor from uh, Brainstorm School. So great content as well. And start making some of the gamut slash limited palette decisions that we're gonna talk about uh, in a bit. But looking at the world and trying to convey what um, they're seeing. So the next step is now that we have an understanding of materials and what they look like, we can start making those decisions that we saw uh, in uh, Mokim's tutorial and even go back to some master studies, uh, still lives, as well as plein air, uh, as we saw before. So that's a continuation of this as well. Uh, there is this book that came out recently, Color and Light. I haven't bought it uh, to this point, so I don't know for sure, but I know a lot of great artists contributed to that, so I'm adding that to the list. But definitely the biggest name in gamut mapping and limited palettes is James Gurney. Uh, he has a lot of tutorials, YouTube videos uh, on the topic. A lot of them will be in the description below, especially this one on using tri triads uh, on painting. And this is where the perception of color will start to play a big part. If we jump back to full screen here, you've probably seen this before, especially if you saw my video on color and light. Uh, this is what I mean about understanding color relationship and developing your perception. This color is the same as this one. Uh, so basically you can already see the transition from a cooler color on this side to a warmer color on this side. And I'm painting with the same color. But when it gets on top of a very warm red kind of environment and uh, context, it will change. If I paint it here, you can see it, it's redder uh, and warmer than on this side. And it's the same color. Uh, you've probably seen this uh, discussed before, but to be honest, every time I, I look at this, I can't believe what I'm seeing and what I'm 
talking about. So that's pretty much worth uh, going back to. And if you have that kind of understanding, there's a great video from James Gurney on this kind of limited uh, and gamut mapping. Uh, there are some blog posts as well. I'll add all links into the description. When you understand that, you start being able to make decisions. And movies do, do a lot of this, normally through filters and post-production. Uh, post but lighting here, very warm versus very cool. And the tones, uh, the skin tones change. So this is almost like a blue and this is way warmer. Uh, also here is very much of a blue. If we throw that in here is really a blue. So understanding that th these are done with this kind of mentality. If we check that again, we'll see a lot of desaturated uh, blues and a little bit of purple uh, here and there, uh, but not what you are seeing here going into more of a normal, uh, I would say, uh, white Caucasian uh, skin tone with a warm light. With a, a different color of light, it will definitely change. So this is these are the kind of things we need to start to think about how the colors, uh, the color of light interaction with materials that we were seeing before will change the overall image. So if you have a very strong blue light, such as the moonlight, uh, as James Gurney discusses on, on his book, you definitely will have a lot of these interactions and what seemed warmer will probably become desaturated and cooler. So that is awesome and, and really great, really hard to grasp, but really great to, to understand. Uh, one of the best resources on this is this tutorial, uh, this video actually from YouTube, uh, from Jeremy Vickery as well. Uh, so definitely check that out. The link's in the description. Wait until you finish this video and then go straight there. Uh, this is also color theory, but applied for more of an animation context, as well as you would see uh, on a Schoolism course from Daisuzumi. And also in a more realistic setting, uh, we can make a lot of those decisions, especially changing daylights uh, and so on, getting to a refined painting from imagination, combining everything that we understood so far, uh, as well as this one's painting landscape studies and making design decisions so that you really uh, choose what you're going to put uh, on your final painting. And now that we got to this point, uh, Things are gonna get a little more complex. I love this course by Craig Mullins, but to be honest, it was really hard to follow uh, for me. It, it's supposed to be a beginner course, uh, but he discusses a lot of different lighting situations to go through uh, a lot of different approaches because he doesn't want to say what you should do and open your mind for the amount of possibilities out there. So that can be a little scary. So I would highly encourage doing some of the other courses before going back uh, and, and covering this content. I, ha I don't know about uh, Zach Retz. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, but he has a painting class as well on Gumroad. It looks great. It looks complex in his results and control of values and lights. This almost remembers me a little bit of uh, Alberto Miogo as well. Uh, this, we have seen uh, some paintings from Nathan Fouts as well that uh, remember that con very deep control of light and colors. So I think this is more of advanced course than um, the other ones. So that's why I suggest going through this later on when you have a little bit of a grasp. You can also start defining your process. So it could be paint, uh, painting from 
black and white and some of these tutorials in here uh this one by Eitan Zana as well goes into that kind of mindset it's good on a sense because you can control the mid values there's an interesting uh, to, uh YouTube video uh, from Nathan Fox on that topic, covering that on um, a portrait. I'll add to the description. So we will control better your desaturated colors, but sometimes it can be tricky because the mid values will definitely have more color. Is that what you want to convey or not? That's a decision you need to make and you probably will need to paint over so watch some people's uh, processes and, and try to find yours. And last but not least, uh, using all that we have learned to really convey your message. Uh, so designing with color and light is one of the best resources out there on this topic. So using different colors of lights, intensities, and so on to create mood. There is this color and light workout. I haven't seen this. Uh, should be good as well, a continuation from the course, but into a more exercise-based uh, structure. Uh, environment and light also touches uh, on what we've discussed previously, more on this, how to look at the world, uh, as well as this tutorial here uh, that I, I skipped uh, previously. So definitely worth checking out. This one is from Houston Sharp, as well as the course on schoolism from John Burton. Uh, they will probably tackle harder decision-making processes as he's painting on oils and trying to design a lot of stuff. So also it would be interesting to get to them closer to the end of your journey than uh, previously. And I added two extra resources in here. So digital landscape painting uh, workout by Nathan Fox. So if you have a schoolism uh, subscription, you uh, you have access to all of that, as well as this uh, resources on paintings by uh, Florian Opetit. At least that's how I think it should be pronounced. He's a great photo photographer, painter, lighter, everything. So everything he puts out, uh, it will be great on learning how to see and how to convey mood with lighting and color. So going back for a quick recap and just putting here the numbers again. So if you want to check out the links in the description, uh, you have that closer. But what we've seen here today and I try to convey is that we start with the understanding of light and physics of those principles, getting uh, from simple, simple forms and primitives, uh, simple this frog is mostly a sphere, a big sphere with some uh, spheres added on top and get more and more complex, both in your decision making and the range that you have to work with, as well as the topics that you're trying to tackle. So planar uh, studies and looking at real world and trying to distill that into something that makes sense in your painting. Uh, and from that, start limiting your palette and understanding the aspects of not only light in a realistic sense, but also what decisions you want to make uh, in your painting. I love this painting by Maxfield Parrish. You can see it's not realistic lighting. It's compressing a lot of the values and uh, the colors as well, but it's a very pleasant uh, depiction conveying what he wants to convey. So make your choices, understand um, the relativity of colors and uh, where things are. So once again, go watch Jeremy Vickery's video and then get deeper and deeper into your process, understanding how you can have better control of your colors, saturation, and that will jump into composition and how you want to drive mood and where people are looking. For that, the best way to learn is looking at a lot of reference. So definitely take your time with this collection from Florian if you enjoy, or look at 
the golden age of illustrators, Maxfield Parish, the Hudson River School, so Albert Bierstadt, and a lot of people, Nathan Fox, more contemporary, or old masters, uh, Rembrandt and so on, and how they use light, color, edges, and everything to really convey what they want. This is where with practice and a lot of practice, a lot of mileage, you will definitely get way better. If you do go through any of these tutorials or any tutorials from my previous videos, please do come back and share with us uh, on the comments below. If everyone comes back and shares a learning, definitely the whole community will benefit from that and create a learning, a very interesting learning environment. That's what I, what I want to foster here, doing this kind of collections and curating a lot of tutorials. I'm, I'm going to be going back uh, through some of them sometime in the future. But for now, I would highly encourage everyone to share and learn from teaching and trying to put what you learned into words. That's definitely super helpful. So if you got to this point, thank you. Uh, have a great studies journey. Have a great day and take care. See you in another video.